One warm day around the Deerly Farm, there was a view of the farm and the fields all bright and live. Over this particular hill was filled with yelps and small barks of puppies nearing. Emerging out of the hills were Dalmatian puppies. There was Tripod on the lead while Lucky, Two-Tone, Jewel, and many others were in after him. At the very end was the small yet smart pup, Cadpig, who appeared to be exhausted from all this running. Uh, why isn't my heart rate as fast as everyone else's? I feel hotter than a chili pepper, specifically a Carolina Reaper, which is saying a lot since that's about 2.2 million on the shoe. She said, out of breath. She then stops for a moment and has a mind for some nourishment. I think it's high time I accommodate myself to some nourishment to satisfy my poor body, she said to herself, adjusting her blue collar. She begins to head to the farm where she and the rest would usually rest and mingle. As she was nearing the entrance, she gasped to see what was there before her eyes. Not only was her blue bowl full of conine crunchies, but there was Roly, the chubby pup, munching on hers. Roly, the small pup yelled. He jerked his head up and gulped nervously as soon as he saw his sister glaring at her. What are you doing? She asked through grit teeth. But eating, he said. I can see that, but you're eating out of my bowl. So please tell me why or I will cause you physical harm of the worst kind. She demanded. Roly gulped harder. Well, the silo where we usually keep conine crunchies is empty. I dunno the details, something about the delivery being delayed or something, but I was so hungry. I had to eat something. Cadpig wasn't pleased from what he did, but she did had this feeling that the empty silo was a problem. To her, maiming Roly for his gluttonous behavior would most likely be an understatement. Roly looks down at the bowl, frowning to see that that was the last gulp on the kibble. Ah, shucks, that was the last bite, he sighs hopelessly as he begins to walk away. Sorry, Cadpig. Cadpig walks her way towards her bowl to see how clean it was. It was, in fact, clean out of kibble. She glances over where Roly just disappeared as she stated negatively. Not only can gluttony can be such a selfish thing, but it can very biohazardous to him if he isn't care on this proportions. She then felt her stomach growling. She places her paws on her cute belly, rubbing it. Well, I guess I need to substitute the kibble for something else. The thought had never crossed her mind before, but she wondered if maybe the dearlies kept a steak in the fridge. Heading through the doggy door and went up to the fridge. It's very uncommon of me to stick my nose into the dearlies fridge, but maybe I could find something edible in there, she opens the fridge and then, her eyes widened. Inside was a variety of meats, cheeses, fruits, veggies, butter, condiments, etc. but sitting right in the middle, was a thick, fat, juicy steak. She felt the thrill inside her that she didn't think that a steak could satisfy her. Such variations are just worth more than feeding onto one simple steak. She begins to fly inside the fridge, ravaging all that was inside. She tore into the other foods first, cheese wedges, grape vines, even whole sticks of butter and bottles of ketchup and mustard weren't safe from her hunger. When all of that was gone, she eyed the large steak and bit into it, tearing off small chunks until it was gone and all that remained in the fridge were remnants of food and a fattened pup with a belly as big as a basketball. She hiccuped as she pats her gut. She belched loudly as she covers her mouth. Oh, she giggled. To belch like that indicates not only repulse but displays how pleasing it was. She then looks around to see what was left. There, before her eyes, she spots a drumstick. It was a chicken drumstick and it reminded her of Spot and the other chickens and hens. How tasty they must be, how juicy they looked, how they she shook her head in disbelief. What was she thinking? She couldn't eat them, they were friends. But her stomach let out a hungry groan, disagreeing with her. Well, I hate to see this going to waste, she stated. So she grabs that drumstick and takes a small bite out of it. Her eyes sparkled, the flavors exploded in her mouth. She had gone crazy with gluttony. I'm afraid to say this, she mutters, but I must have more. Back in the field, we see Lucky and Roly, strolling on the hill where the pups played a while ago. Roly was talking to Lucky about the kibble crisis. I felt so sorry about Cadpig for eating up her last patch of conine crunchies, but my stomach wasn't. If only stomachs have hearts. Oh, Roly, you really need to control your appetite. Lucky commented. Otherwise, you'll go from being Roly to Lucky. Spot came running towards them and stopped to catch her breath. What happened to you, Spot? Lucky asked. It's Cadpig, she's gone nuts and she's eating chickens, like she's a fox or something. She responded, panic in her voice. What? They said in unison. They scurried to the henhouse. Lucky and Spot were speeding ahead while Roly was panting out like as if he has been out of shape. There was sound of frightened clucks and squawks coming from there and feathers spewing all over the place. When they arrived, a few hens managed to get out of the hen house. 
Inside, they see their sister holding Cornelia above her gaping mouth, about to swallow her whole. Spot squawked frantically. Lucky and Rolly sprint up in the air and pounces onto Cadpig with a thump. Cornelia was left free as she scurries away, squawking frantically. They hold her down as she yells, Chicken. I must have more chicken. Everybody gathers around and glances at poor Cadpig. Whoa, what happened to her? Rolly asked. She's a lot fatter than usual. Looks like she had her first bite of chicken. Lucky said. How'd that happen? Spot asked. Then, a grim idea popped into Rolly's head. She didn't go into the fridge, did she? They all looked down at the crazed, fat puppy. We've got to do something that will keep her from eating anyone. Lucky said. I got an idea, even though it's gonna cost my snack. I got a lot of stashes of canned food and more canine crunchies back in the barn, inside a hay pile. Good idea. Lucky winks at him while holding those chubby arms and legs. Spot, and get them. Spot salutes as she speeds away, clucking. Spot pulls back the barn door and finds the hay pile sitting in the middle of the floor. Digging into it, she found boxes and cans of canine crunchies. Geez, no wonder he's never around when we need him. She said. She loaded the treats into a wheelbarrow and had a cow, who was Duchess, pull it to the hencoop. By the time they arrive, Spot pulls the stuff out of the cart. Thanks, Duchess. Spot thanked her. No problem, darling. Duchess said as she heads out. Spot shoves the pile into the chicken coop as Lucky and Rolly are still holding the chubby yet crazy pup down. Spot thank goodness, you came back this quick. Lucky said, holding down the arm and left on one side. Hurry up. Rolly yells, can't hold her down any longer. Cadpig then glances over and then smiles. Oh, yes, please, feed me or I'll feed on you. She warned. She then spots struggle and lays there, opening her mouth. Let's hurry up and feed her, I don't feel like being eaten today. Lucky said. Rolly frowned, he didn't want to give up his stash but didn't want to be eaten by his sister either. With a heavy sigh, he watches as Lucky opens a box and pours the contents into her mouth. From the lovely flavors of this canine crunchies, Cadpig munches away. She really begins to enjoy eating more often. While Lucky was feeding her box, he begins to ask Rolly. Rolly, when you said that the canine crunchies was delayed until tomorrow, did you know that you had this secret stash all along? No, Rolly honestly said, placing a biscuit into her mouth. I must have forgot all about it when I've heard the news about the delay. Well, I could have thought you were greedily hiding those at the worst times. Lucky said, hey, I'm not a hog. Rolly said that as if he took that as offense. I'm just saying. Lucky insists. You did say you just forgot all about it, so no big deal. Least this will satisfy our sister, I hope. Hey, Spot yelled, holding an open can of dog food. Least talk, more feeding. She lets the food plummet into her mouth. Cadpig raises a paw, telling them to stop. By this point, she was as big as a medicine ball, before you three can continue, while my stomach can digest to make more room, I am feeling tad perched. So please come back with water. They all agreed as they run away to get water. The mountainous mutt waits until the three have returned. Each of them had one tin bucket per person. So that makes three buckets altogether. Pop good. She responded. Still leaning on the floor, she opens her mouth. I'll go first, Rolly insisted as he carries his bucket as he pours the water into her mouth. Rolly empties the whole bucket inside her mouth and climbs back down. Are you full yet? Lucky asked. I don't think so. Spot thought. Cadpig shook her head. Nope. Okay, my turn. Spot said, climbing up and pouring water down Cadpig's throat. While Spot pours water into Cadpig's mouth, she whispers to the boys. If she doesn't get satisfied soon, we'll end up as a three-course meal for sure. Just hang in there, Spot, Lucky said, even though he feels really unsure how to solve this. Spot eventually empties the bucket into her mouth and climbs down, leading to Lucky climbing up to empty his own bucket. Once his bucket was done, Cadpig's mouth puffs as she. B-R-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
The three looked each other, exhausted and out of breath, they wanted this all to end, with no other choice, they walked over and rubbed the white furry ball of fat before them. She sighs as she begins to feel the rubbing sensation coming in. She pants happily as her leg begins to lick up. I remember I used to get rubbed by Roger after a nice meal he gives me, Roly said to Lucky. Hey, Anita would only pet me if she was bored or if I was bored. Lucky responded. I don't think chickens ever get petted. Spot sighs. As they continue to rub, Roly couldn't help but smuggle onto the fatty surface with his face. By that this makes Cat Big giggle. Her belly jiggled, sending ripples across the surface. Roly stops for a moment. I can't help it but I must say, this is kind of fun. Roly begins to climb up. Roly. Lucky yells, what are you doing? Don't tell me that he is willing to make himself a hot dog. Spot mutters worriedly, having her hands on her hand. When he reaches to the top, he could see Cagpide's face. Catpig looks him in the eye. What kind of inkling are you planning on doing next, Roly? She asked, uncertain of what he was about to do. Before she knew it, Roly starts bouncing on her gut with glee. Catpig can't help but feel an incredible amount of happiness. Hey, you guys, Roly said in the middle of his bounces. This is fun. You should come up and try this. How would we know if it's safe to go up there? Spot muttered. She looks at Lucky, but is no longer there. She turns up and spots Lucky, crawling up. Wait for me, Roly. He called up. When Lucky manages to get up, he begins to bounce. This is awesome. He compliments. Cadpig had never felt happier in her life. Not only was she part of the fun but she was also the center of attention. She blushed at how good it felt. I'm at a loss for words, she muttered. Spot still wasn't sure if this was really fun or not, feeling extremely cautious. Back up on the top of Cadpig's round body, we still see the boys having a wonderful time, bouncing. Roly was so buried with all this bouncing that he didn't pay attention to where he was bouncing on. He slips at the slope and that's why the fun just snapped away. Whoa. He yells. Spot squawked with such startled tone. Roly slides down on slope which leads to Cadpig's face. He screams down as Cadpig looks up and gasped. Stomp. Lucky and Spot gasped. Roly. They both shouted. Raleigh's upper half was stuck into Cadpig's mouth. His lower half was still emerged while it kicks around. Catpig looks worried as she tries to speak but her voice is muffled. Oh no. Spot would yell, I just knew this was going to happen. She said, hold on Roly, I'm coming. Lucky yelled as he heroically slides down near Catpig's face and tries to pull Roly out. Lucky pulls and pulls harder. Oof. Lucky sighs as he continues to pull, if Roly hadn't been eating day and night, he wouldn't be round enough to a plug. Or a big, fat hot dog. I am not fat. Roly's muffled voice was heard. Cadpig would like to help, but her tongue was under Raleigh's gut and couldn't move it. Lucky then yells, Spot, come and help us. Lucky yells, I would, but I'm worried about slipping right in. Spot reluctantly stated, Quit, being a chicken and help. Lucky yells as then he, too, slips. Lucky slips and knocks into Raleigh's bottom, sending them both into Cadpig's mouth. She tries to hack and cough them out but sadly, she swallows both her screaming brothers into her stomach. She starts crying. Spot squawks frantically. She begins to run around in circles, yelling, Oh, what'll we do? What'll we do? Bog ock. Cadpig's yoga ball-sized belly now has two helpless puppies inside. The kicks and punches were seen on the surface of the fat belly as Cadpig was so shocked and scarred from what just happened. She begins to cry so badly. The worst has finally happened, she muttered, in spite of all the yelling and squirming. I just had made a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Before anything else, the whole place faded. The place disintegrated as we see Cadpig awake, screaming at the top of her lungs, sweating and crying. She looks around and finds herself on the hay pile, all by herself. She looks at herself, her body is back the way it was. Oh, it was just a nightmare. She said, sighing in relief. But she wonders if Lucky and Roly are alright. She was to scurry her way to find them just when she heard familiar voice, calling her. Hold on, Cadpig. We're coming. Help is on the way. Bog ock. Hey, wait for me. Turning to one side, there was Roly, Lucky, and Spot rushing for Catpig. Are you alright? Lucky asked, scanning around her. Are you hurt? We heard you screaming like if Cruella just kidnapped you or something. Spot said, yeah, and I had to spot eating Conine crunchies from the silo to run with the others. Roly said, with the gang, Catpig begins to feel safe. You two aren't maimed. Catpig smiled as she hugs Roly and Lucky. The two pups looked confused, so did Spot. What are you talking about? Spot asked. 
Oh, nothing much, the smart pup said, just had a unspeakable dream that nearly scars me for life but I am pleased to you all in one piece. I don't ever want unpleasant fate to befall on you, guys. Ever. She remains clingy on her brother. The gang may not know what her nightmare, but the passion from their sister and friend made them understand that she wants them to be okay. They can tell that this nightmare might have something to do with whatever happened to them in her dream. So the boys smiled and let her hug on her. Spot just stands there, feeling so happy to see the siblings hugging. Once the hugging was done, Cadpig asked Roly, Roly, is there plenty of Conine Crunchies near at the silo? The chubby brother nods, answering, yep. Well, I do hope you're not going to pig out all of them. Cadpig said, no malice intended. Roly doesn't like being described big like in fat but something like to pig out isn't that much for him. So he said, no worries. I promise to leave some for ya. Cadpig giggles as she talks to the audience. Better a cadpig than a cadhog. After that the iris went out. The end.